Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Life Live. It's showtime, baby. It's showtime. And we're having an actor's show. Everyone is an actor. I think that I'm an actor. Don't you think that I'm an actress? No? Okay. Anyway. I think I am. <laughs> but we have a great show for you all. Um, again, thank you for joining us for our, I think this is our seventh or eighth. I wasn't good at math, so you just keep up with us and we'll just keep it going. So let me go ahead and introduce my co-host, my hostess for the most is Mr. Gerald C. Anderson. Come on, Gerald. Hey. Hi. I'm so used to saying good morning. I was getting ready to say good morning. Yeah, but... it's like way in the evening time. Yeah, morning, the right. long since past. Yeah, the, the sun is down. So, how has your week be- your week been? Uh week has been pretty good. You know, so you know, things are going well. You know, still missing my boy, but you I know. know. I see. I'm proud of you. You you was crying. You was crying. Oh, right? No, I was not crying. Yes, you were. <laughs> But I do, I do miss, I, I miss him, but I am proud of him at the same time. So. Yes, he's definitely, I remember I met him and he was what, I think 10. Yeah, he's probably, probably about that, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. he was 10. Now he's 18, 19. Oh my God. 18 years old out there yeah. doing his thing. So. I know, he's a young man, but that's, that's definitely a proud moment. Proud yeah. moment. Yeah. So, excellent, excellent. So, do you want to know how my week was or you're not going to ask? Is that what we're doing? No, you didn't give me a chance. Um, listen, <laughs> we got people coming on. I need you to be like, Tina, how okay. was your day? Tina, how was your it, week? It was great. We have a lot of guests. I don't have anything else to say. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> After all of that, that poor Will. Exactly. I, feel, I feel sorry for Will. <laughs> You should. <laughs> but yes, but we, I was t- um, explaining to everyone how we have a great show with some outstanding actors um, and we had an actress as well. But because you're coming from the director side, you'll be able to, you know, relate to this even more so um, because you're, you know, author, director and that whole thing. So it's going to be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be cool, too. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, one of them couldn't make it tonight, but. We'll get her on back on one day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll have, and we have okay. another actor special. Oh, yeah. We're definitely going to do that because we know a lot of musicians, a lot of actors. Yeah, oh, and if we had, and and you want to mention about the comedian show we're going to have? Uh, that was your some, you go yeah, ahead. Okay. You take it. If we if there's some comedians out there, look at Buff. I know Buff is like pick me, pick me. I know she's just lit up. Uh, I hear him, I hear her in the back of my mind, in the back of my head. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> but we we're looking to do a LOL show is basically what we're gonna call it. So we're looking for some comedians, clean versions, because we don't want no cussing and carrying on and you know, That's all right. that craziness, but, um, but we're definitely looking for some comedians. So mm-hmm. if you guys know someone that knows someone that knows someone and they funny, because don't be sending them to us and they ain't funny. <laughs> I, I laugh and, and I don't like corny folk. So, but um, if you know anyone, send them our way. Just hit us up, you know, um, the life live.com and um, or on social media and we'll definitely reach out but we're looking to do this show because i think we're living in an atmosphere where people need to laugh we Absolutely. need to laugh we need to smile we need to yeah. be joyful so i'm really excited about the lol show mm-hmm. and because it's needed and laughter yeah. i think is the best medicine yeah. and that's just my motto so, so they, again, they need to be exposed to some of that 30 minute pre show that Buff always gives us. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If they were a part of that, oh. when she's on time, that was, you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but we love our Buff. I love me some Buffy. Yeah. Oh, I love her. I wish I was in LA just so I can hang out with her one day. <laughs> yeah. but, so, but, speaking of Buff. Do you want to? We can go to our um positive media moment with Buff Patterson. Well, before that, before we do that, let's talk about October 25th because that's going to oh, be a super, okay, super I'll let fun. you take this. Go October 25th, we're going to have a night with the Albrights. That's Gerald and Glennis Albright. And if you if you love jazz music, you know who Gerald Albright is. If you love good, good cooking and waffles, then you know who Glennis Albright is. So the whole show will be Gerald and Glennis Albright. 
and then they will be on October 25th. So make sure you set your notifications to re remind yourself that we're going to spend the night with the Albrights. Yes. The and if you don't know about the Albrights, you've been living under a rock. Under a serious rock. Like a whole <laughs> a whole rock. <laughs> Yes. yes, that's going to be an exciting show. I can't wait for that one. And right. they're going to have the, the whole entire show. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. And and just getting to know, you know, I I, oh, I, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. So Love I'm music excited. and the Waffle Queen. Yeah. <laughs> They'll see the commercial today yeah. again. Because <laughs> the waffles and yeah. Oh, yeah, the waffles. <laughs> I think that's molasses. I don't even think that's syrup. I think that's molasses that she's using. Because that's some thick, juicy stuff. She's oh, yeah. on the waffles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, right. Okay, go ahead, Gerald. That's your girl. You bring her on. I know. I, was, I thought you had more to say, you know? Oh, no, that was it. Just the, okay. just the all breaks. All right. So here we go. We got our positive media, media moment with my girl, my darling friend, Buff Patterson. Hello, my Yay. darling. Hey. Okay, so on, on the side, this is Buffy with Life's Positive Media Moment brought from Southern California. Amazing weather in LA. And um, I just want to say before we get started, I want to give all prayers to Israel. So we got to talk about that. We got to get his first things first, but I do have an amazing positive media moment. And this whole segment is about never, never give up, never give up. Um, I'm give, de dedicating this show to Tabitha Brown. Now think about Tabitha Brown. Tabitha Brown came out when she was 19, LA, 19 years old and she didn't make it. Struggling actress came back to LA, was Ubering. Her husband was the LAPD police officer. She was Ubering and she just did a simple review on um about having a blt vegan sandwich oh. it went viral to the point where um whole foods it was, she did a review for whole foods um they made her a brand ambassador within a span of five weeks she had over two million instagram followers mm. now she has like five million instagram followers <laughs> four million TikTok followers top of the brown is what what happens when you don't give up Wow. On, on top of that, she has an Emmy winning um, an Emmy, not Emmy. It's a um, but Emmy winning award series on family, on for Tabitha Brown. Right now, actually, last year she came out with a cooking show, a vegan cooking show on the Food Network. Oh, vegan! She also, okay. August eleventh, debuted a line at Target. Yes. And has been on Good Morning America and has been featured in Essence. This is for a woman that's been in the business for over 20 years and didn't just start it until 2017. Oh, so wow. So for all the years that are aspiring actresses, comics, don't give up. Because God always saves the best for his. There you ah, go. <laughs> I like that. Right. Wait, so Buff, wait. So this was a sandwich? She did a review. Uh huh. For, for Whole Foods on a vegan BLT. A vegan BLT. Just a review. Just a review. Just a review. Just a wow, that's interesting. It, okay. it, went, it went viral. Within a span of five weeks, she had over two million followers. Now, was it because, like, how did she become viral with just this sandwich? Did she eat it a certain kind no, of way? Well, she like, did a review on it. it. That's the right. funny thing about, about social media. Social media gave her this platform on plant-based foods. And you know what? We I mean we don't know what the algorithm is doing. What's that algorithm right, doing? Right. It took off. You know, people try to eat healthier. She is a plant-based chef. She uh, supports good. veganism. Um, she is a Christian woman. She's married her husband for five million years. She's five million years. And, <laughs> and because of that, it's given her a platform. I mean, come on, she's a target, a line at target. Yeah, I mean, and she was um, in essence, and this was in a whole five year ratio. Like, she started what, 2017, you said? 2017. 2017. Yeah, that's, so, that's... you know, and you know, I like doing shows. I like doing shows about or doing segments about young people, mm -hmm. but I also like doing shows for people that have been out in the business for a long time and still are trying to build their brand. And Tabitha represents when you stay in it. 
And you just right. never know how God can bless you. This a small, it's a small review. And then that goes viral. And I think that's one of the most encouraging things we have going for us. Never, 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 never give up. Yeah. All right. All right. That's a good one. Oh, right. great story. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to get me a vegan sandwich. No, I'm not. All right. I need ketchup. I need lettuce, tomatoes. Right. I need real meat. Please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need a sandwich. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Buff. <laughs> See ya. Bye, darling. <laughs> All right. Buff Patterson with her positive media moment. I had to practice that. Like, you see I how know. good I got? Like, I'm, I'm good at this now. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's go to that um, commercial with the waffles and the molasses. <laughs> and all then right. on the other side, we're going to have our first guest. Well, the, the, what we have is his clip first. We're going we're gonna to well, play yes. his okay. clip and then, then David A. Jackson will be joining us. Mr. Jackson is what they call him. <laughs> I need my fix of lettuces. Waffle and pancake mix. Oh, yeah. Easy to make cuisine on your plate. I need my fix of lettuces. Mm. Waffle and pancake mix. Oh, yeah. Fluffy and light, you love every bite. I need my fix of lettuces. More for the pancakes. Oh, yeah. Easy to make cuisine on your plate. I need my fix of lettuces. More for the pancakes. Oh, yeah. That don't make y'all tune in on October 25th. <laughs> that. that, that. It should be a single. Like I was jamming to that every time it's playing. I'm like, that needs to be like, yes, yes. All right. So they next we got the, the clip for David A. Jackson, and then we'll bring yes. him on stage. Let's get it. Let's get it. Ladies, ladies. We do not need any drama today of all days. Understand? That's me in real life. That's 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 me in real life. No, no, no. Actually, he's the total opposite. No, for one, man, for one, y'all made me hungry. I just ate dinner, and after watching them, exactly. That's not no regular syrup, neither. That's that's the good stuff. Like watching, I was like, oh no, I got. And then have the jam going. Come on, David. You know, I like that. I like that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you, you got a question already, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. And it's How actually a really good question, so I, I like this one. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna how be did real. you prepare for your roles? Is the question. Case I'm gonna be real. Be real, with you. be real with you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let some people in on a little, a little something about about me. You know, I was a, a child that grew up mm, in a household with domestic violence. Mm. So I kind of put myself in that mind frame. I blocked out who I was because usually I'm a pretty, I guess, a laid back, quiet person. Don't really talk a lot. 
but I knew that this character, he was, he was something, man. He was, he was mean. He was nasty. He was physically, verbally, and mentally abusive. Mm -hmm. And I had to think about some of the things that I heard and I seen as a child growing up in the household mm -hmm. that witnessed a lot of domestic violence. So that's yeah. how I prepared for it. I put myself in the mind frame of what I saw. Right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I know, I, I know that um, you 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 also experience a lot of <laughs> comments from people who like we had to remind them, hey, this is just the movie. David. Yeah. Not <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Like after after the movie, man, this dude came up to me, man. I promise you, man, this dude was like six five. <laughs> about, he was like six five, about two fifty. He was he looked down on me. He said, <laughs> he said, you know what? I didn't like you in that movie. <laughs> I've been watching you walk around here. You know what? You're nothing like I saw in that movie. You, you are all right. I said, you know what? I thank you, but you know what? I'm glad you felt that way because that means I did my job. I did my job. All right. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, Burl asked, did you did playing the role affect you? Um, when I when I played the role of Damian Black, I left that character on that set. Mm -hmm. Every time I, every time I, as soon as we were done, Gerald said, cut, we're done. he's, he's gone because that's, that's not me. So no, I've never, no, mm -mm. it didn't, right. it didn't affect me at all because once you've, once you've trained and, you know, you, I've took cla uh, acting classes, been to act, different acting workshops, I can turn it on and I can turn it off. And, See, and that's that's the key. And that's how you know, one, you're doing your job because you you pissed quite a few people off. <laughs> so you, you did your job and you did it really well. But tap that whole tapping in and tapping out, you know, the mental aspect of that. I know that that's probably a skill that you had may have learned just in acting and having such a variety of different acting experiences. Right. Um, so before we go to any of the other questions, let's give everyone a little bit of a background from you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, where you're from and why you get into the acting. Is this mm -hmm. what's your dream? Or mm -hmm. did you want to go and make some waffles and pancakes? Oh, like, wow. you know, you I want do? some now. Shoot. <laughs> After seeing that commercial. All but right. yeah, um, I've always wanted to do acting for a long time, but I just didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what first happened is um, I left college. Uh, I went to Stillman College in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And when I went back home to Florida, from Tampa, Florida, I uh, I, want, I started doing professional wrestling. Oh. Um, you know, the, the WWE, what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. And what? the Yeah, man. And That's they, and they, interesting. I, I was super athletic at that time. And they gave me the name of Luther Body Bag Jackson. Oh, I can't wow. Remember. I carried a body bag to the ring, right? Where I was, you know, put supposed to put my opponents and stuff. And I had to be this bad dude. I was, you know, had dreadlocks and you know, walking around. And I think that's kind of where the acting really started because mm. when I was out in front of the crowd, I had to be this this mean, nasty, bad dude. But you know, of course, that's not who I am. Oh, um, I ended up hurting my shoulder. I tore my shoulder up, and that. That stopped the uh, the wrestling. I did wrestling for like three years. Met a lot of great people, um, a lot of great guys, but I had to stop. Um, years later, one of the guys that was the ring announcer, he was doing an acting school. So mm. I was like, I'm just going to give it a try. So I went in, gave it a try. He was showing me how to, you know, read lines, showing me how to audition. Um just just showing me the ropes wow um from there on he set me up with a um a photo shoot that was like 10 11 years ago he set me up with a photo shoot right and this is so crazy and rest <laughs> in peace to him too because his name is shannon rose and uh and this is a this is a lesson too for people out there that who wants to be an actor mm. go to this photo shoot and it's a contract so okay you get paid one time for your photo shoot today. Okay, yeah, I, I need the money now. You know, I'm not thinking about it later. So I put on a white doctor's coat and they got me doing all these different poses. So for years, 
I didn't see these pictures. I didn't know what happened. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, people from Virginia, um, um, Georgia, they're texting me these pictures of me on these different doctor websites. Like, you know, when oh. people take tests, they have to take yeah. tests when they work in hospitals. All of my pictures that I took from what? 10 years ago are all oh on these websites. Goodness. And I'm kicking myself because now I know more about the business. Yeah, I'm supposed to still be getting paid from, from that because they're mm-hmm. selling my, my image. And yep. because I yep. signed that contract, I can't get a dime. Wow. Yeah. That's that a learning lesson. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a learning skill. And mm-hmm. so it was pretty much from that, um, from that that you wanted to get into acting and you became really passionate about it, even after oh, yeah. a- that experience. Well, this just recently, I want to say maybe like five to six years ago, I really started getting this picture. Okay. Were those pictures, you know, people sending me those pictures. Um, oh, okay. I was passionate about it right away. But another story I'll tell y'all real quick, too, is that I walked into this agent's office. I had sent, I was sending my headshots out to different different um, agents. I was looking for an agent. I'm not going to say her name because I don't even know if she's still in business today. Mm-hmm. But it was in Florida and I go into her office and they put me in this room and they had me do an audition in front of one of her assistants. So me and him, we read back and forth. We do the audition. And this is my first time like doing an audition or anything. And he's like, oh, wow, that audition was amazing. So oh. in my head, I'm like, dude, stop. You, you can't you can't pull one past me because I've mm-hmm. I've kind of been in the entertainment business. I've done the wrestling. I've done. Don't don't you can't play me. So he says, I'm going to go and get the head, you know, lady or whatever. And I'm going to sit you in front of her and then we're going to interview with her. Right. So I go with her in her office and she said, oh, I heard you had a great audition. So she's just saying about how she's discovered this person and she's done this and that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just waiting for, OK, what what's the when you're going <laughs> to drop it on me? Right. 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 But she's like, so what we do here. She says, what we do here is that we we take our own pictures here and we usually charge about five thousand dollars for pictures oh. for headshots. I said, whoa. <laughs> she said, but today I'm I just want you to just do about three thousand. I said, three thousand? She said, Yeah, and you have to pay at least a certain percentage of that today. I said, No, wow, I can't do that. She said, mm-hmm. Well, you're not ready to be an actor. You won't make it in this business. I say, oh, I won't say, okay. But let me tell you how God worked. Two weeks later, I got a call to be in Ride Along. And I was standing next to Ice Cube in the scene in Ride Along with Ice Cube. Oh, wow. Two weeks later. Two weeks later, <laughs> Two weeks later oh, I got a call yeah. to be in Ride Along. And I'm standing next to Ice Cube. And we had a scene with, um, I had a scene with Ice Cube and Jay Farrell. Um, we were at, it was at a, mm-hmm. at a park scene. And that was like the first, that was like the first movie what? I did. Oh, mm-hmm. see that? That's pretty. Yeah, that that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, people people try to pull one over quick on you. you know? <laughs> so, they try to get you, man. Yeah, yeah especially like with you being new in the industry, they you know you right. have those that are trying you know test the waters and see what they can get from you. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's an unfortunate reality that I'm sure still goes. You know, happens. Yeah. Today. It's still happening today. It is. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately. Yeah, so yeah. Beth had a, a great question, and this probably would uh, um, apply to many of your other roles. Um, did playing the role affect you? And does any of your roles affect you in some kind of way? Like with Standing Firm, you was just mean and nasty. You was just mean. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah. Did that make you angry because you did in real life like experience such an you know atmosphere of that matter um in, in you know in your childhood? So did that like make you a little angry um when you did like a flashback, so to speak, playing that role? No, because like I said, I, I understood that this is acting, you know, mm-hmm. I'm here to do a job. Um once I channeled that person at that time, when it was time for me to leave, I was done with them. Hmm. Wow. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go back to who, whoever, Damian Black, I, I let it go. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't keep it in my heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, here's, here's a, um, a, a question for you. You, um, you played the role, Damian Black, the, the, the 
abuser. The mean guy. Mm -hmm. The really mean guy. <laughs> so, so out, you know, now you're out and about, you're living your life now. Do you kind of like watch and pick up cues from people is around you that, and you know, if you notice something, you think like, wow, is he a Damien Black? You know? Ah. <laughs> From characteristics, like certain characteristics, right? Like and you're watching other people, and then, you know, it doesn't affect you after you after right. you've gone on. But does it affect you in that you're looking at other people, and you may, you know, think that something might be going on? No, I never, never really thought about it. Like I said, I just, I really just, once we were done filming the the, the movie, I just, I totally forgot about Damian Black. Because See, and it, so da yeah, so David, with any role, and, and maybe this is just for all actors, and I can ask um ask Marcus when he's on, how do you tap out, tap in and tap out? Like, is there a skill mm -hmm. to it? Be it, you know, if you're playing a bad role or a great mm -hmm. role, like how do you tap out of character? Is <sighs> is it a skill that you learn, or is that just something that you know either you got it or you don't? I, for me, I think you just got it if you or if you don't, um, because I've known some people have played some roles and they've allowed it to get to the head, right. and they're still that character even years after because mm -hmm. they've 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 put themselves so much into it, yes. they've gotten so, so deep into it, and now they don't know how to let it go. Wow. And right. I wouldn't allow myself to to get that far because I, what I grew up watching, I knew I mm -hmm. didn't want to ever be that person. Yeah. yeah, that's just yeah. somebody that I didn't want to be in. I wouldn't be married today if I was that that person. Yeah, you wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, at all. I would be yeah. in jail or dead <laughs> one. Yes. The woman, yes, the woman today. Yes. Some of these women today, they ain't going for that. They ain't going oh, for yeah. it. Right. You're right. You're right. And yeah. I think um, who was that actor that was in um, the one with um, uh, Taraji B. Hent Taraji um, B. Henson is that her name? I think. And it was the entertainment family. Uh, at, what was it? Was a popular series, but anyway, that actor I was Empire. reading up on him. Yeah, I was reading up on him, and he quit acting because that character he couldn't tap out. Mm, really? That was very interesting to me. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I forget the name of it, um, the the little series. Of, I never watched it. Was it Empire. Was it Empire. 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 Yeah. Yes. Empire. Which, and the one that played it? the uh, what's his name? The one that played the dad. Oh, Terrence Howard. Yeah, he quit acting because he couldn't tap out of that character. That's why we haven't seen him in oh, a, wow. in a few things. That. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like you can Google his story, and that's why that's always been really wow. interesting to me um, mm -hmm. as how do they you know is there a possibility is there a skill to mm -hmm. kind of come out of that when you've played yeah. so many different roles yeah it is, it is tough because I've, I've played other roles too and i always get the bad guy roles for some reason I don't <laughs> <want this. laughs> it's always the bad guy but and i, yeah. and, I and i like that because it gives me opportunity to to be someone that i'm not right you know? right and stretch yourself because right. I think it's good to stretch yourself as an actor right. and or right. actress. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I act every day when I play, you know, with my students. Uh, no, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not so gonna the, talk about So David, the, the the first time that I um I saw you act was um the entrepreneur. My, oh, was Bill Cooper man. was the director. Yes. And yes, um, yes. So I, and it was funny because when when I was we was looking for people for standing firm, my partner Renata was was actually handling getting the uh, getting the actor. So you know yeah. down there in Florida. And so when she got you, I, I didn't recognize your name. So when mm. I saw it, I said, I know that guy. <laughs> he was, oh, he was in the entrepreneur. He was in yeah. Mills Cooper's movie. It's like, right. <laughs> so tell us about the entrepreneur. And you know, oh man, that one along with along with standing firm. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur is also one of my favorite movies I filmed. That was my first movie. Wow. Um, I actually filmed and I had like lines in, like I was the main character. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, first meeting Mills, I think I met him through Facebook and we met and he, um, we talked for a little bit and he was like, all right, well, you got the role. 
he handed me the script and I'm telling the script was like thick. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we about to film in a few weeks. I'm like, I gotta remember all this in a few weeks. Wow. So um, we started filming and I, I just, that's, and I'm gonna tell you, that's really when I fell in love with it. Mm. Um, that character um, uh, in The Entrepreneur, I had to be this guy who was just pretty much, he was down on his luck. You know, mm-hmm. he lost his, he lost his job. He lost his girl. He lost, uh, his lights got <laughs> turned off. His car got towed, but through faith in God, he was able to obtain everything back wow. because he continued to have his faith in God. And that's what the movie's about. The mm-hmm. See, he okay. was a good guy in that one. So yeah, he was yeah. a good guy in that one. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what's your favorite role to play? What's my favorite role? It, it, I would probably say it was the entrepreneur. I would probably say when mm-hmm. I played Jeff, and my name was Jeff in that one. Um, I had a, I had a good time in that one. We and it was just really a lot of time. It was just me, Mills, and my guy. He um, goes by the name of Blaze Media out of Tampa. Mm-hmm. Um, it was us three a lot of times, and I think oh, that was wow. my favorite character to play. Mm-hmm. I had fun playing Damian Black too because it was like I get to be this bad guy. Yeah, I get to, like, everyone hates. Yeah, everybody hate. hate me, but please, that's not me for real. Don't think yeah. that's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember talking to Renata a couple of times after after that movie uh, showed, and people were people were saying to her, "Say if you need help, you just come and let us know." <laughs> oh no, <laughs> see this kind of jump on me, man. <laughs> it's it's like he's acting. He's acting, right. people. It's just the movie. Right. Yeah, but you you did a oh you did a good job i will say that for sure i appreciate that yeah. so so got, if, um, oh go ahead i'm sorry joe so you have um people you know i'm sure that there are a lot of young people that they're, they're trying to be an actor you know or get into the business so what advice would you give them uh real quick i don't know how much time i got but i'm gonna tell you something man buff says something that just it just hit me about not quitting Mm. Because I, I, I real, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how much time I have, but um, you're good, man. In, in, in 2020, man, I actually I, I quit, I stopped because um, my brother died. My brother yeah. uh, passed away at 36 years old, and um, Sorry. I just was like he was, he was a big inspiration in my life. You know, mm-hmm. always encouraging me. He was there for the for the show, for uh, standing firm. Well, okay, and um. <laughs> I just, I was like, man, I'm done. I don't want to do it. But what's, what's, what kept happening is, you know, man, God, I mean, he worked in mysterious ways. I kept getting those pictures that I was telling mm-hmm. y'all about that I mm-hmm. took 10 years. People were still sending that stuff to me like, hey, I just seen you on the, I was taking the test and I just seen you on the site. And that was another reminder, like, oh, wow. You still keep going. And then during the time that I said I quit, I had some auditions that probably would have changed my life, but because wow. I couldn't focus on them, mm-hmm. I didn't get it. I had an audition for BMF to play Big Meech. <gasps> to play Big yeah. Meech. When the, when and that's first, huge now. When it, when the, the, but the older Big Meech. I okay. had an audition for that. And then I had an audition to play in this TV show that's on Apple TV called Swagger that has Ice Cube Son in there. Mm-hmm. And I had two auditions for that. I almost got that part. I had an mm-hmm. audition for a TV show that Oprah Winfrey um did and i also no well this one was way before that but i also auditioned for uh to play zach and sisters oh I mean, yes yeah because yeah. that's a popular series yeah now too. I, I had an audition for his role too but y'all see you know he, he oh that. he's kill- yeah, yeah he, he's killing it he's killing it yeah mm-hmm. yeah but yeah man i would say just just don't give up you know um okay. first things first is take classes take acting mm-hmm. classes Take mm-hmm. workshops because that's where you're going to learn how to audition. That's how you're going to learn how to get into character. That's how you're going to learn. You're going to learn everything mm-hmm. um, about about acting by taking mm-hmm. the classes. And then okay. your acting coach is going to take you down the path that you need to go so you can be able to understand what you're supposed to do and not do and how to do it. Right. All right. You see, you got a, a comment saying that uh, she was said she was upset with you for the longest. Yeah, I, said, yeah, I, I agree. No I way. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you were upset because, like I said, that means I you did my did? job. Yes, you, you did uh, that. If you didn't, you if you did didn't, that. if you didn't leave upset with me, then that means I, 
I didn't do a good job. I agree. <laughs> so kudos to you because you've Thank achieved you. this. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, it. so yeah, you definitely left an impression on people. So uh, mm -hmm. we appreciate you coming by tonight, man. It, yeah, you know, it's good talking absolutely. to you again. <laughs> I appreciate it. And just real, real, real quick, I'm just say throw it out there right now. Um, I'm writing my script right now, hey. a series. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say the name of it because I don't want nobody to steal my stuff. <laughs> you know, people be out there, man. You know like, they will. That name. Ooh, I like yeah. that concept, but it's a crime drama series, and that's uh, why I was wishing that um Kelly was here. I know she, mm. she um, had some other obligations, and that's cool. I'm definitely gonna get with her later because I had I was I was already writing her in the script, and there's oh, other wow. actors out there that's from Tampa because this is gonna be based on Tampa, the same way The Wire brought us mm. Baltimore or the same way Snowfall brought us California, this series mm. is going to bring you to Tampa, Florida. That's what oh, that I'm looking sounds for. interesting. So I got okay. a lot of actors in mind um, that I that I want to, you know, kind of give a shout out to and who I'm looking at, like guys like Aaron Quick Nelson. That's my boy, Elliot um, Bunch. I hope I'm saying my boy uh, last name correct. You know yeah. Elliot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 Elliot, we was in the movie with Elliot. <laughs> Elliot is doing his stay He's right good. now. Man. He's really good though. Elliot was just in Snowfall. He did a scene with Louis where he um oh, pulled really? his gun on. Yeah, he was just as I was yeah. man, I was so excited for him. He's um, yeah, he's, he's yes, definitely he's and he's a great guy. So yes, he is. Yeah. And another actress, Kimberly Webb. Like it's a lot of the oh yeah, Kimberly. Yes. I've never heard too. Yeah. Right. I've already been writing and I'm just trying to put it all together. Not making no promises, but once I put this together, I want to get funding for it because I want to be able to pay the cast, the crew, mm -hmm. and I want to make this. I want to make this great. I want to make it good. So you can do it, David. You can oh, yeah. do it. I believe in you. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I believe, and you got the whole, you know, concept of never giving up. So That's I right. believe you can do it, and you're gonna do it. I That's believe right. it. Thank you. I appreciate so, it. And when you do it, just make sure you call us so we can. Oh come yeah, absolutely. Up. Hey, <laughs> I yeah. got y'all. We in we'll, def we'll definitely cover it. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Right. absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you so much, Mr. Jackson. I don't even feel thank right you calling all. you David. It's like Mr. Jackson. Let's just stick uh, with that. <laughs> that sounds cool. That's cool. I love it. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we look forward no to problem. seeing you and looking for that, that series. No problem. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, man. All, all right. right. It's great when you have actors and they're nice people, too. Yeah. You know, I like that. I mean, that's what I said. He's a he's a total opposite. Oh of, yes, like, he's yeah. nowhere near the, near the character of Damien. Yeah, Black. and that's probably why he played played it so well because he's yeah. so opposite of it, and he's like, you know what? I want to be mean for one time. You know, and he <laughs> right. did that because we yeah, still man, and it's been how many years later? <laughs> yeah, when he said he he's quiet and and you know don't don't say a lot. He I remember the first time I saw him on the set, he mm -hmm. was. You know, off to himself, quiet, like and studying his notes. I was like, "Yeah, y'all need to take note from this guy, right?" Mr. Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> he's studying his notes and stuff. He's, he's learning his lines, y'all. So yeah, mm -hmm. so Dave, Dave is great. Man. It was great working yeah. with him. Yeah. Uh, so where are we now? Oh, we got a commercial. Commercial again? time. Let's go for commercials so we can pay some bills and get Marcus to put down that cup. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always dreamed of writing a book, but you're not sure where to start? Or maybe you've already written a book, but you don't know how to get it published? Don't worry, you're not alone. Self-publishing can be daunting, but it doesn't have to be. That's where Life Publishing comes in. We're a full-service self-publishing company that can help you every step of the way, from formatting to distribution. We can even point you in the right direction for editing and marketing your book. With Life Publishing, you can finally share your story with the world. We'll work with you to create a book that you're proud of, and we'll help you get it in front of readers. So what are you waiting for? Start your self-publishing journey today with Life Publishing. Visit our website or give us a call to learn more. All right. All right. I was just in my... Right, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got something going on when we come back from commercial. 
<laughs> I mean, still we got to do it in the background. It's like, you know, we got to make sure things are adjusting and it's like, ah, yeah, no, anyway, no, no. what can I say? What can I say? So life publishing. So let everyone know about the um, youth. Youth, that's coming. Um, that's coming. That's coming. Okay. But, uh, yeah, because I think uh, publishing, you know, we want, we, you know, we can publish your book. So if you just reach out to us and we can, we can get with you and do a consultation and get your book published and get it out there. Let the world know what you, what you got, what story you got to tell. Yes. So that's definitely something that um, I'm happy we're doing, especially for the children, for the young ones, the young ones anyway. <laughs> so I so, think that's exciting. And go to our website and, you know, Life Live and donate so that we can help these kids out. You can help us stay on air because we need your assistance. So go to the lifelive.com. There's yep. a donation box. We take the money that folds and we take the kind that jingle. So it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Absolutely correct. <laughs> exactly. So donate because we can use your help to stay on air and to keep this machine going. Right. So All it's right. shout out time. Shout out. Shout out time. So, I, so I I'm going to go first because I oh. always let you go first. <laughs> okay. So my shout out is, so, is for my daughter, my <laughs> favorite middle daughter. I wanted to say happy birthday. She is 30 years old. She is up there. <laughs> she is up there, but she has grown up to be such a great young lady. And you know how you have those kids and parents, and Gerald, I'm sure you can relate to this, but it's like you have those kids that, you know, they were they were a little handful and they had their trials and tribulations. And it's like, you want to just bust them upside their head a couple of times. And that they came me. out to be all right. You know? <laughs> that, that was me. That was me to my mom. So. Okay. See, see, I was a good, no, I wasn't a good kid. I was getting ready to lie. So no, I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but she grew up to be such a great young lady, great wife, and she has three kids. And I'm just so proud of her. And again, I just wanted to say happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Lord. <laughs> and I'm the what she's saying right now. She's like, Lord, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord. happy birthday, baby. Mwah, 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 mwah. Love you. Right, so my my shout out is is uh, in line with our theme for the day, actors. Mm -hmm. So you know, one of my favorite actors is Denzel Washington. So I just want to shout Denzel out. He got a boatload of good movies out there, you know, and then we appreciate him setting the bar for a lot of a lot of these guys that are both of these guys that are on here today, you know. So I'm sure, you know, but they both probably saw movies with Denzel and probably inspired them them to do what they're doing today. So you know, my shout out is for Denzel. And you know that's not the right, the proper way to say his name, right? You know, have you seen that? No. When he said everyone, it kind of just, you know, went with Denzel, but it's Diesel. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> yeah. Diesel. <laughs> but it's, it's actually pronounced Diesel, yeah. <laughs> Washington. But everybody said Denzel, so he just rolled with it, and that's yeah, how. I'm still rolling with it. Yeah, everybody does. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's definitely set the bar. He can yeah. do anything, and we'll go see it. <laughs> All right. So, All righty. So we got next the Marcus. <laughs> Marcus Murphy is from Washington yes. area. So we, know, we gotta watch a clip from uh, <laughs> one of Marcus's movies, and then we're gonna bring him on stage so y'all can meet him. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> All these years, you still hit soft. Now, you know my business, man. How about your show? I just want to know why, Lloyd. I mean, seriously? You've been calling him your son? I gave you purpose. I took you in. And for what? <laughs> then you go behind my back? We put this organization together practically. <laughs> and all these years. You've been raising the show type of son. Man, listen. I left because you sick. We were supposed to be about the community. 
You asked me to kill a child. A kid? No, man. But you took that money, didn't you? To kill that baby. And for what? To play house? He killed my father. Mm. He thought I was gonna find you, huh? But now you're here. Sinner. Just like me. Ain't that pot caught in the cat black? Man, just leave him alone. <laughs> See, I can't do that. Not looking that rain. And get rid of Soul Tiger. And guess what? You gonna find him. <laughs> and take me to him. Hi, hey, welcome to the show, Marcus. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I don't know what's up with these abusive roles y'all playing, bro. Oh, wait, what's with all the fighting? It's not me. It's, it's the character. It's not me. I'm it's not me. It's you, right? Yeah. It's, it's not me. It's you. Yeah, I was like, I was like, man, it's two two guys, and they both beating up on people, and just the nicest guys ever, but they play such mean roles. <laughs> well, yeah. hello, Mr. Murphy. I'm good. And yourself? Good, good, good. Well, so tell us a little bit of what that role was about. How did you feel with playing that character? Because again, this is opposite of who you are. Yeah, so when I so first off, the guy who wrote the um the script, he and his wife auditioned me like when I was home. And I didn't know if I got the job or not. But then when I got the job, he was a student at Regent at the time out of Virginia. So it was like for his thesis called Threshold. And um ah. when I got the job, I was like, okay, now what do we do? So then we got the job, we went through um the table read and all that good stuff, but then they had changed the script like the day before filming, so I didn't even know. Yeah, so we had to learn lines like really heavy. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> wow! But, but you know, one of the great things that I had with the um director and his team is that we have like communication to help me with my my character development in that short amount mm. of time, and then looking at the people around me as well, like my friends or people I know outside of like my friends, like family too, and I just pull from them to get. You know what you saw. Wow. So how did you, how did it make you feel? You know, a day before your film, your you guys are filming. Like, I mean, what went through your mind? You have to be like, what in the green damn? I, I felt like uh, I'm about to just say I'm sick day, but COVID wasn't around at the time, so I couldn't say I had COVID. <laughs> but, but you know, to be honest with you, though, I to be honest with you, it was definitely overwhelming. Mm -hmm. initially but i think it's like some of the best training sometimes when things go off the haywire for you and you have like a schedule so for me i was overwhelmed but i wasn't too bad because i kept a real cool cast and direct and they fed me well too so I wasn't oh that's bad. important <laughs> yeah that's important that's, that's how they got you see yeah food will make you happy it's like okay i can do this you saw the waffles at the beginning things. right so the wall food is a good sandwich. <laughs> the last day we had a good dinner. With the, oh yes! So you, you was catching the Holy Ghost, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the guys, the guy who you saw with the dread, is an actual pastor. Believe it or not, in real life. Oh. <laughs> oh <wow. laughs> so he probably got some like little holy water. Yeah, on it. seems like yeah. I know how to get them. Yeah. <laughs> the right. So we got a question that's asking you, how did you get started in the industry? Um, Believe it or not, I got started from doing a print ad um, at the oh. time for synthetic marijuana, known as K2 Zombie, K2 Zombie, mm. for synthetic marijuana. And it was in New York and Times Square on the buses and trains in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And um, I didn't know at the time. You know, when you book a job, you got to work twice as hard to make sure you're keeping that morale and momentum going. Because I'm like, oh, I'm on the bus. I'm in New York. I'm going to get a job from here. But that was, <laughs> that, was no, that wasn't no, the that case. Was, <laughs> that wasn't the case. It was like back to the regular job, back to um, hopefully and trying to give me a nice paying job and not no pennies. But um, that's how I got started doing um, print work. And then um, from that opportunity, I was able to um, transition to like television and film. And I started out doing like extra work just to get like a feel what being on set would be like in the long hours. Cause my photo shoot wasn't even the long hours, but the acting, you're gonna give a good 20 <laughs> 
plus hours really? at a time. Depending mm. on like your role, and then also depending on like the shoot of like the principal actor. Oh wow! Because on background, you know, I don't have no kids. I can definitely be there longer, and they pay you well too, and they feed you. You get overtime as well. <laughs> but then, uh, but you like <laughs> you the food? Feed, <laughs> you feed me good, you know. Keep your jaws good. I, I might not be too mad, but <laughs> that's the beginning of my career. Not now. We gotta get. get <laughs> we gotta get that that lady that Buff was talking about the the Uber sandwich lady. I don't. You got yeah. you got her. We good. You know. I like I like chicken, fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you want that vegan sandwich? We ain't doing the vegan. <laughs> we ain't doing the vegan. We gonna do that like three, four years from now. But at this moment, to keep keep me around. Give me some chicken. <laughs> but then um to but on a serious note to really just elevate myself as a talent and not to give me chance another extra band on set. Um I met this guy named Kelsey Carley, who I had met I mean at the time I had met him in college, I mean high school going off to college. And he kept looking at me at the time doing like an exercise because the program that I was in was called Teens Who Don't. And it was about like the tobacco usage among teens and how we can really get them away from doing it. So I didn't know at the time the two acting coaches that came in was actually acting coaches. So he kept looking at me. I'm like, what is he looking at me for? But I didn't know he was studying like he liked what I was ah. doing and work with me more outside the program. And I think mm -hmm. Mr. Carly um, a lot because without him, I don't even think I would be doing entertainment. And then the more that we really spoke um, and talked, you know, he'd been on Broadway. Um, he trained like the late Chadwick Boseman, um, Keely, okay. Sinead Williams from Family Matters. She actually was in his studio oh, wow. during that time on Family Matters. So I didn't yes. even know I was around like a legend without even knowing he was a legend. And even if I would have known his credentials, it wouldn't make no difference. It's like, what you looking mm -hmm. at me for? But then the more we really like, <laughs> but in a respectful way, though, in a respectful way, but the more he really right. took me under his wing and really just gave me the twos, um, I think. Like I've been to like a lot of acting classes and acting schools, but sometimes about having the connection and the realness and the rawness yeah. can sometimes make a huge difference. You know, when you go to your audition and you feel confident, it's like your grandfather rooting you on your father or your mom. Oh, so. see, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. And he fed you, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and he fed me. And believe it or not, you know, Mr. Carly, <laughs> believe it or not, he never charged me a dime for, for, to, for teaching me the fundamentals of, a, of an acting coach. He never oh wow! Oh, okay. So he really believe in you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's commendable. Yeah. That is definitely commendable. Okay. So, uh, so <laughs> how do you? Because I I was asking David the same thing. How do you tap in, tap out? Because this is again just is just one of those questions that I've always been curious about. How do you do it? You know, it depends on the role, honestly, and where I'm at at the time that I take on the job and then when the job is done. So mm -hmm. to answer your question on, on a bigger level, I, I go to therapy. I have a therapist, an amazing therapist, and I have regular friends outside of acting that don't mind giving to me straight, both men and women, mm -hmm. and even, the, even down to their kids, depending on how I make them upset. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, though, I try to just be grounded because I know oftentimes certain roles can be a lot. Um, I know I did a play before um called until the flood it was an off broadway production and it was about mm -hmm. centered around mike lee when he got killed um back in 2015 um and the the, the character he, he himself he wasn't heavy but the whole play itself was heavy and as i was preparing oh, for, okay. i was looking at content to get me in the mindset to be depressed to be happy and at, the, at one point i was like i'm tired of crying i don't want no bags <laughs> under my face like i'm tired of this but <laughs> but I think what really it helped me during that time as it, you know, as I was preparing was, you know, looking at like comedy or talking mm -hmm. to my friends, it's not entertainment, talking to my therapist about how I feel and, you yeah. know, how I feel while I'm pre preparing for the role. And I remember him asking me as well at one point, like, you know, when it's over, how would you feel? Well, I can't mm -hmm. give you that answer because we still in it. But at this moment, today I feel happy, today I feel sad, today mm -hmm. I feel like, do I want to be here? You know, I don't feel that way. But as I'm preparing for the character, I had to embark on how he would feel. And but right. I never thought about but I never thought about suicide. I just putting it out there. Right, I never right. Thought about suicide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, but I think that's that's again like that's commendable. I think that you take that personal responsibility as far as like handling, like we talk about mental illness a lot these mm -hmm. days. Like really taking that responsibility of of being in control of your mental. Because I would think just from a natural aspect, 
you know, a lot of us go to work and we play mm -hmm. that role. And then you come home and you got to play that role. But sometimes people just in general don't know how to not bring work home, so to speak. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think with you taking that initiative and being responsible enough and aware, and you know, enough awareness of your capability and what you can handle and, and going mm -hmm. to therapy, that's commendable, Marcus. Mm -hmm. I love and that. I love it. And I love my and family. You stay hungry. I, love it. <laughs> I do stay hungry. <laughs> I do stay hungry. I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe because of COVID, I'm blaming on COVID. Even though COVID is, you know, three years, four years down, it's COVID. Fault. My mom yeah. tell me all the time. Um, I was like, you know, I'm like, I'm here cooking, and she be like, you know, you got that pot belly stomach, and I'm like, I know, but I'm gonna lose it in time for my, my entertainment work. So it's okay, but I'm cooking. Like, man, I like it. It's cute. I like it. Yeah. So how how do you go from from uh, you know I I know that some actors they they tend to get locked into certain roles and and that's why some people quit shows like you you know you play a role and let's say that role lasts five or ten seasons and some actors will will quit because they don't want to be characterized as that mm -hmm. person that's or that, that or that's the only type of role that they play um, so I guess it's a two part question so one is 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 that something that that you uh avoid are you are you like trying to avoid being locked into being characterized as as only playing one type of role mm -hmm. and then how do you go from role to role if, if you if you are if you are doing that you know if you're a bad guy today then tomorrow mm -hmm. you're a good guy and you know how do you how do you manage that you know it's the complete opposite for me believe it or not like a lot of people don't don't trust me with that type of role when it comes like the toughness because i come off like um with the suit and tie real calm demeanor um yeah soft spoken at times they don't really trust me with the material so sometimes mm -hmm. i had to really like prove to you like Ooh. you know rough my face up get the little beady head i might not like, you know i love brushing my teeth brushing don't my brush head. your teeth but i might gotta do that too like be like look you know this ain't in my, in my mind like i know i'm smelling a little rough but let me show you though like why i know i could do the road despite the we I presented to you. So mm -hmm. the role that I got with the guy um threshold that you just saw, you know, I don't know how many people will had audition, but I do know like when I read the material, um, I felt like I could contribute <laughs> to that. Um mm -hmm. and then I also I look young too. So sometimes it's certain roles that I feel like I know I can do. Or even roads where I feel like I can really go there or challenge me to go there, but mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Um so when I do get it, I know I gotta do it ten times even more than I would initially did it just to show other directors in the future mm -hmm. who don't see me that way. Like, I think you can pull it off. And that's how I go about it. And then sometimes I call some like my friends that may be like, what is it called? Um, like street boys or like thugs uh, or something. Uh, they, they're uh, like, we cool, but they know I'm not going to corner with them either. <laughs> but I might just study them and how they and how they nuances it. So mm -hmm. it can help me too. Because again, I'm not standing on no corner. It's cold outside. But <laughs> <laughs> but what I will do is let you know I'm going to pull up for like 30 minutes just to get an idea of what I need to do and, <laughs> and keep it pushing. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you do so a lot of research I, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Marcus, how do you how do you memorize it like how do you like read you know something so thick and your character has all these different lines how do you keep it how you make it stick because sometimes Man. i forget what happened yesterday <laughs> i'll be forgetting sometimes too old shelly with my book i get my book but what i do is the, the, the good for sure but what i do is just you know i i, I meditate a lot to just get me in a calm place before i even study any material because one as you stated before, it's about doing the work. So I think it's for me disrespectful to try to embark or study any lines as it pertains to anything when I'm messed up in the head right now. Like, let me just get me together first. Let me get me together. And then once I get exactly. me together, I'm weak. Exactly. So for sure, because I'll be like, life going this direction, life going in that direction, and I got to show up and be <laughs> fake. Like you said, this job, these. Acting yes. no mentally, I'm I'm I'm, I'm tired, you know. So I gotta show up. <laughs> but um but I but once I, I get myself together, like really get myself together, I read the whole script because I want to make sure when I'm reading one, I can embark on it, you know, if there's enough time mm. I can be recast, but really embark on it. You know, what's the outcome, what's the meaning of what I'm reading, and then also what is the purpose of it? And if there's no purpose, 
for me and my character with this story, because I read everybody's lines as if I know all of them together and how uh -huh. my character is going to sync. And then once I know where my character fit in his role with this particular character, whether it's the mom, the son, the, or whomever, or the dad, uh -huh. then it allows me to go over my lines. And I, like, I highlight, I ask questions. And I go to my acting coach, too, like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And this is what mm -hmm. I, you know, came up with. But then he and I may look at something totally different view. And then that's how I made to study my lines. And I just go over my stuff and I read it, you know, for hours, like about three hours a day. And then wow. at night, it's on my head as well. And I have like my, all my AFARs in too, because I have like a voice recorder. So I allow mm -hmm. myself to hear, hear wow. what I'm saying. So sometimes they think I'm, it's music if I'm like walking, but it's really my script. And then sometimes if I want, like that day when that woman asked me for a dollar and she was like, why not? I should have probably yes. used one of my lines. And then I hit my headphones in out and said, oh, it's not you, it's the line. Right. But I couldn't do that. I wasn't, I wasn't quick. I wasn't quick on my toes. So yeah. that's not prepared though. And then and also too, I had my mom, you know, read lines with me or my friends. Um, yeah. Some of my friends went to like performing art schools or they just be out day to day stuff. So help me so we can get this check. You might not get that yeah. check, but I'll get right. a burger. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I guess because you're so passionate about it as well, it helps you kind of stick to it and kind of, you know, be determined to learn in the lines and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like someone like me is like, Shh. I'm like, I can't memorize all this. Pick somebody else. <laughs> right. Now, if you want to be like musical theater, then that, that, you're going to lose me there because I'm not doing Oh, anything. yeah. But I, I get distracted easy. You want some some comedy, some dramatics? I got you because we here with it. <laughs> yeah, and one of the comments they was like, "He's hilarious. You should be a comedian." I was thinking that, Beryl. So you, you, you are know, hilarious. You know, I want I want mind doing comedy. I just want to respect the craft. So you get if you give me Godfrey, like Godfrey, I love Godfrey. Oh yes, you yes. give me him, and he really break me down. We're gonna be with it. Give me like a good year and some change. I, I, I can come out the gate. I can come out the gate. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Linda Dean wrote a comment to you. So um Marcus, you continue to amaze me. Your work at the compassion and passion for what you do is commendable. Your smile is electric, your personality is simply the best. Mm -hmm. Linda, uh, Linda, yeah. Linda. So I met Linda, she's amazing too. So I, initially I was doing this movie a few years ago called the 21st Century Bang um, movie. Yeah. And you ought to check it out because it's an amazing um, flick and the people, the guy who created the film was in this band called the 21st Century back in the day. And the guy okay. who wrote Set It All with Queen Latifah and all of them, um, mm -hmm was in that band and um they oh. did a movie about their life going up in hers where and it just debuted in August. So um real cool um film. And she was one of the production people, like a grandma oh, on the set, um cool. the cook for us, you know, all the stuff. Yeah, you so, go with the food again. You yeah, just... you go with the food, you know? <laughs> they know what to do to keep us around look. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna stop blaming it on COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how long you been in the in the industry? It's been um, a little over 10 years now, like 11 okay. years. Initially, I started out in college um, with the print ad, and I um, thought, you know, that was like a game changer for me in 2013. So I left home and, I mean, left school, came back home and got the, the harsh reality. It's not that easy, but it also was a learning experience for me too, though, because you're really passionate about something, you know, you gotta go for it. And I didn't really know That's what direction, true. you know, my career was going to go or if I, even had like a career, but I knew I wanted it. And I didn't know about, about like the head shots and all that kind of stuff initially, mm -hmm. initially, when I really mm -hmm. indulged in acting. So I used my print ad from the, the, the that I did in New York, and I used that as my head shot. And that actually was able to help me get uh, some opportunities in the beginning of my career. But then, you know, once you get older, then, you know, you be phasing out, they be like, okay, now, it's time to get some, some professional head shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, and I would I would think that the 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 DMV area up here, plus New York and all, is mm -hmm. there's more opportunities up here. Do you, oh yeah, do you think that's true. Um, uh, you know, me and my friend just having this conversation. You know, she was telling me, yeah, I feel like, or she felt like I had done so much here in this city that now it's time to go to like California or so. And I keep telling my friend, like. Even though the West Coast may have more opportunities, and I know I could be working every day, even same with Atlanta, but 
I'm not living down in Atlanta. You know what I mean? I, I don't knock the city. It just ain't for me. And then with LA, LA not for me either because I don't know we know how to maneuver. I'm not living them, them living in a car story that's dead and gone. I'm not getting no yeah. roommate. <laughs> so me like, I'm not LA, doing it. <laughs> LA, if I got me a contract with a nice paying job. Even the show get came, just pay me. And I can mm-hmm. go back about, you know, mm-hmm. but the good thing is you know, one thing my mom really instilled in me initially, I didn't really understand it until now. You know what's going on with like the writers on um, striking everything. Yes, they finished my finished my education. So I do have my education in political science. So even if I never wanted to oh, do yeah. specifically acting, I can do like um, paralegal work. I can be in the mm-hmm. government, all that good stuff. So it's you know twofold. Follow my dream for sure, but just had something to fall back on if I feel like I want to do something different. And like, right? Okay. Are you, are you uh, like Dave? Uh, Dave is into into writing a movie. Are, are you right. getting into that area too? Is is that something you're doing too? I am, and I don't want to talk too much. Don't about tell it, us the I title on that. Don't tell but us the I title. Say, <laughs> but I am reading this book right now about this amazing actor that we never really hear much about, or mm. back in like the 30s and 40s. And mm. as I was reading his story, like I love Sidney Poitier. That's one of my favorite actors. Oh, but yeah. now, yeah, I got like his biography. Oh, and yes. Mm-hmm. But the guy that I that I, I researched, you know, I read like a photo shoot about him to get like the momentum and the buzz going. And I've been mm-hmm. reading his book and I'm trying to like start the writing for like a short film to like get the mm-hmm. buzz going. But eventually it's gonna be a feature. And when mm-hmm. I tell you about com- com- complexity, yeah, that man is very complex. And wow. I don't think I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have no food for this one. Um, Look, ain't no food for this. One. It's water. It's straight. It's for this one because you gonna find it. You'll find it. I'm gonna find it. But it's but it's good though. You know when I do like mm-hmm. my history and I really start learning about new actors or not new actors, but actors you never really hear about because they weren't like main mainstream like the city mm-hmm. put here. And I love city. Like even when he died, I oh was my gosh, he can't be the man. Icon. Yeah, icon. Yeah, yeah. 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 God rest his soul. Yeah. So I have two questions for you. So one of the questions is like because you seem like you really do enjoy this, and much like David, he's you know you guys are very passionate about acting. How do you stay keep that momentum going? Like how do you you know with the um, writers' strike, you know how do you stay and say okay, I want to continue this, and mm-hmm. also with that what would be like a dream role of yours like what could you actually see yourself doing like you know a superhero yeah. like what do you what would be a dream <laughs> role <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a trainer at <laughs> i got you black <laughs> panther um, be, the, be the next black panther no right like that would be that would be mind-boggling oh i see him in that now that you say that gerald uh, <laughs> you know the way i stay grounded is just remembering the, the lessons early on in my career, like from Mr. Carly, when he said, you know, do what you love because you love it not for a check because the money is uh-huh. coming. Mm-hmm. So if you don't go into, I never came into acting, you know, for the money. Though when I got mm-hmm. my first um, modeling job, I felt like every job would be like that, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But because I, because of his, his teaching and just like his grandfather feeling and just his knowledge from being in the industry for so long, um, he just gave me some really valuable information is do what you love because money going to come, opportunity is going to come. Amen to that. But if, you, but if you're going in for the wrong reasons, you're going to always be upset. You're going to always be stressed out. You're not going to be yes. about something that you want started. And there has been times, you know, even after he has given me that advice and I've utilized it and applied it, where you do want to give up because the industry can mm-hmm. sometimes be shady. You'd be thinking it's your friend, but they want to get on just as much as you want to get on, mm-hmm. so you don't even know who to trust. And mm-hmm. then, if I'm too real for the Hollywood people that I see that want to be Hollywood, I'm too raw. But then, if I'm too mm-hmm. Hollywood, man, I'm people that's not in entertainment, then I'm different. So then it's like, well, I don't know my balance or my right. niche, and right. it can be sometimes overwhelming. So what I just wanted to do is just the acting is my job. <laughs> This is who I am. I can make you laugh if you want. You want to yes. you want to cry. We can cry together too, you know, because mm-hmm. I got a lot of scripts in my head. So <laughs> it's what you want to look. So yes, yes, this, yes. But, yeah. You know, but really just you know, really just knowing like which for me is for me too. You know, I know it's a big concept that we hear now, but I'm really at the place now where any role that I get, whether it's a supporting or a leading role, 
Mm-hmm. Or even hell, even an extra. Like, I'm not too big to be no extra. I just did what? that on Sunday for a show. <laughs> Look at I you. had no problem. Me and people. <laughs> I had no problem. Like, sometimes I'd be like, I hear you. I just, just take direction. I ain't got no, no lines. I ain't got to be no makeup check. It's come at you. <laughs> Perfect, you know? But it, like, <laughs> but it also keep me, you know, hungry too, though, because it also mm-hmm. shows me when people are, like, for example, you never really know who going to be a breakout star that you around yeah, when you want to set. Mm-hmm. So you want to be respectful to everybody. So mm-hmm. when I was talking to you um, early on before the show started, and was it Buffy? Buffy, Buffy. from California? Mm-hmm. When she was saying she was in the ATL for that event, yes. it kind of made me remember, like, I don't say the event, because I ain't trying to get nobody sued or myself. But <laughs> <laughs> right, right. the event she was talking about, though, I, I can relate to what she was saying, because it do make you feel like you this small when you were amongst the bourgeois or one of the oh, wow. individuals. Right. And right. I remember just saying to myself, like, no matter where my career takes me, how high I may go or not, mm-hmm. I got to be respectful to everybody around me because I'm just like them. And without right. the people, it's no career for me. That's how I eat. That's how, yeah, you know, yeah. literally, you know, and... <laughs> It just goes to show you no matter where you go in this world, whether it's in the United States or out, you just want to be re- remember like uh, he was a decent person, she was a decent person, mm-hmm, and, right. mm-hmm. when, and that's really it. So that's how I stay grounded, like just knowing. Um, one, the same way I got my career could be taken in no yeah, way, just like truth. that. Yes, yes. People gonna remember me, you know how I treated them, not about my talent, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why you gotta be respectful to people, no matter how big the role is or not. Mm-hmm. And then three, you know, just knowing my why, you know, why I got into it. It wasn't for the money. Um, it wasn't for any of that. I mean, it was really for like I like what I do, I love what I do. And you enjoy and you it. Re- yeah. And I enjoy it. And then sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, I remember I can like, tell. You know, I do enjoy it. And sometimes, you know, even like if I meet some friends, mm-hmm. some friends and the other friends, like I don't really know how to feel you out. But after like we really start talking, oh, you funny, you cool. I, I look at you a little different, and I thought you was like stuck up, but it's like no, I'm, I'm just like you, fool. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> then, that authenticity, uh, yes. Yeah. Like you, you know, like different is probably our resources, but that's going to win too too if <laughs> the government mm-hmm. shut down. So we don't know. Right. <laughs> so, uh, my, that's true. And you have a great attitude. I just yeah. love your attitude and just how you you just look at things, and again, staying humble. You know, yeah. so and and I just I'm a big big believer in your attitude determines your altitude. So it's like attitude is everything. You know, and that's like I most of my job. That's yes. like I most of my job. It's not because my I mean I'm not saying my talent wasn't like a, a, a fit in it, but I know mm-hmm. I was like maybe the third or fourth person who they um <laughs> hit up for the job and not the first, but <laughs> maybe look I know you gotta be real, you know, because sometimes you ain't number one, maybe number four to call this. But mm-hmm. if I was able to be bumped from four to one, I'm mm-hmm. okay with that too, because yeah. really you saw something. You know, I remember um I did this, my first leaving job back in like 2017 and i never forget the director fired me not because of my talent because i missed one rehearsal and i said you know what i will never miss a rehearsal again for you sir even right. though i wouldn't pay me but it, he she told me something too though you know he really told yes. me well, being punctual being yes. punctual because yeah. everybody can get the spot and um yes i think yes. some audition tape again he hired me and well we hired me and mm-hmm. then um mm-hmm. when it comes to my dream role i think my dream role I don't have a specific dream role, but I do have a desire to do more biopics um, of people who I look up to, like Sidney Poitier, oh, okay. those kind of things. So I would love to do more biopics in my future oh. um, to really, you know, you don't, you don't really know much about Sidney. I mean, I read his books, but outside his acting, you don't know about his life. So if I could ever get a, like a role that I could really dig in and like mm-hmm. really meet his family too, or meet their family, wow. be around it, that would wow. make me happy. Wow. Okay. That's so awesome. Well, thanks. Uh, well, thanks for uh, for coming by and talking to us, Mark. Yes, you have been a joy. Thank yeah. you. Now Thank go get something to eat because I know you. <laughs> you know I am. You know I am. <laughs> yeah, you, know so, I am. you guys, are, you guys are really inspiring the, the work that you're doing out there. In the, in the oh my gosh! World. Yes. So I know. Hopefully, some people will will be inspired and they'll they'll get on that journey if they uh, have that in their spirit. So, mm-hmm. we appreciate you taking the time out and coming by. And, and talking to us for a little bit. 
Yes, definitely enjoyed you. Definitely. <laughs> if you need me again, call me. I'm here. You know, I might, right. by that time, I got some comedian skill and stuff to pause. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I might be on a comedian podcast. Uh, you sound right? like, you sound like you're doing pretty good to me. <laughs> I think you can do it. I think you can do it. <laughs> Before I let y'all go, you know, I never knew about hackling. So I went to a club some years ago with one of my former friends. Mm -hmm. And the person that was on stage wasn't really funny. So I felt like, well, let me just take a stand. And it wasn't me. It was the alcohol in me that made me be like a hacker. <laughs> I didn't know. That, that liquid truth. You know it. it was the liquid truth. And, and it was Patron that I was drinking, too. So no more Patron. <laughs> but um, she got the comedian. He got so mad. They threw a mic at me. Almost hit me in my face. Oh, oh. hit me in my face. So then, then she threw a drink in my face. So oh. the people who gave the event had to sneak me out the back door. <laughs> I got her, got her that mad. So I don't hackle anymore. So that's why I haven't done comedy. I don't hackle no more. Right. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Thank, thank you, you again, Mark. All right, Margaret. Thanks. You have been a joy. Likewise. Thank All right. You. Bye, bye. Bye. <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh, he is definitely. I like him. Very yeah. nice guy. Very humble. I yeah. love that. Two good, that two is, good people. You know, it's, it's really good chat. In all them. honesty, yes, yeah. yes, both of them are just awesome. And it's so funny because they both had similar roles, right? <laughs> Which was hilarious. It's like, wait, they both beating on people. Why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but they're so that, opposite um, of who they actually are. So. I, so I guess it. we'll do this um this um poetry corner. Yes, so let's get, get to it. Get ready for church. <laughs> oh yeah, right, right. Y'all get your Bibles out because we're gonna go through a verse real quick. <laughs> you gonna be inspired and probably running around in a minute. So, so we got a uh, Randy, Randy J. Norman is a poetry corner for this week, and her right. poem is called "The Answer." The answer. Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah, you have questions. Hallelujah, glory. I understand that sometimes we have questions. Glory. And I welcome them, saith the Lord. Your wrestle with thoughts present a moment to talk, to converse, to chat, for you to speak and I to show you where I'm at right here. Come to me is not just a figure of speech or a not so rational thought. It's exactly what I sought to incite when I allowed myself to be caught and placed in a place to seem to have no mercy or grace. Your pace it's perfect as I walk with you in the cool of the day I'll show you how the answers you seek are in fact in the answers you speak when you open up my word and trust what you see it's me the great I am the one who walked and talked like you endured the cross so that you be new beaten and torn hung and adorned with thorns so that you see yourself this lash right here produce that tear that stands for the fear that I'm not near. This hit over there is for every blank stare you share with the world when you think I don't care. These nails in my hands keep them open for you to place all that you have including questions and what you do. These thorns on my head pierce the thoughts in my mind releasing those thoughts is yours so you'd always know how to find me. I buried your darkest days and coldest nights in a tomb with me covered in light so bright so that all they could see is me covering you, glowing in you raising you so that you'd be brand new perfect in me yet you, unique, one of a kind and never blind to all I've done and always seeking to be the one who will ask and keep on asking who will knock and keep on knocking who will seek and keep on seeking contending for the faith and fighting for your life in me you have questions i am the answer saith the lord Yeah.
Of you in this place with everything we have. The answer. Yeah. Under the collar. That's like, woof. <laughs> yeah. Running around. Running around the church. Yeah. Now it's time for the donations. Now is a good I time know. for the donations. Go to yeah. lifeline.com and drop them donations in. Help us out. <laughs> Help us keep the show on. Exactly. Exactly. So that, I mean, I enjoyed this. Once again, we had a, you know, a great show. Mm-hmm. Wonderful show. Yeah. Great actors. I mean, just, and Randy just, you know, she just, I mean, she does it every time. She's just right. awesome. She is and, awesome. And she yeah. is just phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And so there's I, another, um, another tidbit about next, uh, the next show that will be the, um, the Albright's. Night with the Albrights. Yes. 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 And the Waffle Queen. Yes. <laughs> So if you love jazz music, and uh, Gerald Albright is one of the biggest jazz musicians in the world, mm-hmm. so uh, you, you got to come in and check out his music and check out his story. It's, they have a great story, <laughs> a great story. I, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Of how they met. I can't and, wait. And, yeah. Still together after all these years. So I, all these years. And I can't wait for y'all. Trials and tribulations. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait for y'all. So make hear. sure you guys like, share, and definitely donate. Lifelive.com. Go to the donate box. <laughs> keep keep just, us on the air. You know, keep us going, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we enjoy what we do, but we can't keep always doing everything for y'all enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But no, but we enjoy your support. So you guys just help us out and like and share. All righty. Well, you have a good evening. Till next time. Have a good night. Don't sing that song. Mayana, <laughs> now it's time to say goodbye. Will, Will, come get her. This is where you come get her. <laughs> M-I-C. <laughs> Good night, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> See you real soon. <laughs>